Um, so as you probably experienced, we, a lot of us did our PowerPoints uh, several months ago. So I was looking at the text I'd written and all my ideas had a little bit changed since then. So I decided to just kind of walk you through and I'm gonna, oh, it's on auto, auto? okay, that's fine. Um, so these are from the Profiled series, which was initially part of my Creative Capital grant. And uh, the images <clears throat> really look at the idea of depictions of race through from the Enlightenment to uh, the Second World War. So the images that you're gonna see are gonna be going obviously out of control behind me and I'm gonna walk you through what they're showing. Um, last year I read a paper and I found that it seemed like it was a little bit inaccessible for some people. So I wanted to just sort of simplify it down, even uh, address a couple of the issues. So one of them of previous work that I've done was a race lynching series and searching for California hang trees. The project was a, a nine year project in which I researched the history of lynching in California and revealed for the first time that it was primarily Latinos that were the victims. This is a period that predates the Civil War, so it's really one of the first histories of racialized violence in the United States. It's a history that most Americans sadly don't know about, and though it's a very small number and is not about trying to, to claim some kind of victim status or to put uh, in a different relationship with African American lynching, which were 5,000 cases and some estimates are over 10,000, it still is interesting because it looks at a, a sort of a prehistory, a beginnings of, U, of US race relations. And so as a part of that project, I also set out to go look for the sites. I uncovered what were over 354 sites of what had been uh, previously recorded as only 50, so seven times the known number of sites done through very meticulous research. And then I went out and drove around to look for all 350 sites. Um, the idea was not so much of finding them, so it's not a documentary project, but more of a kind of performative project in the sense that I wanted to witness these sites of a history that nobody else cared about, that nobody else knew about, and that probably uh, is not gonna resonate. And then the second series that came out of that were the Erased Lynching series, where I literally removed the bodies from the images. This series was, uh, has been shown quite a lot and it was also very controversial. A lot of times people uh, uh, oversimplify, or don't, since they don't have the knowledge of the history itself, they often assume that I've erased African Americans, which I haven't. I've only, uh, in that particular uh, series, erased uh, Latinos, Anglos, basically Western cases. Again, dealing, creating a visual metaphor for this missing history. And then from there, I started thinking about, well, why was race such a huge issue? in California, they really didn't know what Mexicans were at that point, so why hate them so much? Which took me back to Europe and to thinking about representations of the body and obviously to the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in, in Paris where uh, Ang Todd and Delacroix and really the formations of how to represent the body were formed, canonized, and then distributed through, throughout the world through what we call art schools. And so <laughs> <laughs> those, legacies those legacies continue to exist and many people still, if you've drawn the egg with a line in the middle, you, you're, you're, you're a part of a, a sort of a representational system that privileged whiteness in a certain manner. From there, I've then gone looking for other representations of difference through museums all over the world, mostly in Europe, but also Asia and, and Latin America. And I've been uh, trying to find this sort of counter. So if the first images you saw were images of fine art representations by artists, this second set of images were images done by scientists. And my interest and in my creative capital project has been to try to bridge the gap between those two projects. So many people love the, the, the be beautiful Beaux-Arts sculptures re-photographed, but the uh, slightly more abject uh, images of what may be a, a deceased person that was cast in the 19th century to be a, put on display in a museum is another part of the same, the other side of the coin. So I've been trying to think of a way to get the project out there. One minute, Ken. Thank you. And then currently, so my creative capital was to do a number of exhibitions, which I've done, and to do a public art project, which these last two images are from. It's at the... Uh, um, Rampart Police Station, which was the most notorious for racial profiling in the history of the United States, and they've invited me to propose a public artwork that will go on the exterior of the building, and so I chose to represent the history of racial profiling, but in a very deep sense, right, and to create a context. So I still have to go through community approval, I still have to go through a lot of different steps, but it's uh, sort of the newest version, and, um, and if you have questions, there's lots more stuff I've been working on related to, uh, to the project that I'm very excited about but realize that we're probably done. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>